Access your free language gifts of the month right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Being Funny Conversation Cheat Sheet. Want to be able to tell jokes in your target language? Or tell someone how funny or unfunny they are? You will with this brand new cheat sheet. Second, all the language you need for everyday life. Get all of our best conversation cheat sheets rolled up into one with this gift. Download it right now before it disappears. Third, must know book vocabulary. If you love reading and want to talk about books, then this next one minute lesson is for you. Fourth, phrases to use with the doctor. Learn how to say phrases like, I have an appointment, I don't feel well, and much more. Fifth, summer plans conversation lesson. Can you talk about your summer plans? Such as, go travel, relax at the beach, or stay at home and sit on the internet. You will with this one minute lesson. Access it right now. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 31% off premium or premium plus with the pretty big deal sale. So to get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hello. 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 Hello is the most basic greeting that you can use. You can use it with your friends, with your family members, with your coworkers. Any time of day is fine. Hello. How have you been? Hello. How have you been? Hello. How have you been? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. So excuse me is the expression you can use when you bump into somebody or when you need to interrupt somebody who's working on something. It's a nice like apology expression to use. Excuse me, how much is this? Excuse me, how much is this? Excuse me, how much is this? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we use I'm sorry in cases where we make a mistake. So I did something wrong or I did something bad. I use I'm sorry to apologize. I'm sorry, it was a typo. I'm sorry, it was a typo. I'm sorry, it was a typo. Good night. Good night. Good night. So good night is the expression we use at the end of the day when we want to say goodbye to someone or when we want to wish our family members a good night of sleep. Good night, grandma. Good night, grandma. Good night, grandma. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you is the expression we use the first time we meet someone. We don't use this like the second or the third time we see someone, only for the first time. Please come in. Nice to meet you. Please come in. Nice to meet you. Please come in. Nice to meet you. How are you? How are you? How are you? So, how are you is used as a very general greeting. When we see our coworker for the first time or we see a classmate for the first time, we ask, how are you? Meaning, what's your condition right now? It's been a long time. How are you? It's been a long time. How are you? It's been a long time. How are you? Yes. 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 So yes is the word we use to agree with something or to show we think something is good or correct. You can use yes uh, in any of those cases. Yes, this one please. Yes, this one please. Yes, this one please. No. 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 So no is the opposite of yes. 
We use it when we want to disagree or show that we think something is not good or is maybe not the best option. No, I haven't eaten yet. No, I haven't eaten yet. No, I haven't eaten yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you is used to express your appreciation for something. You can use this after you receive a gift or someone does something for you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm. 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 So, I'm is the reduced form of I and am. It becomes I'm. Make sure to clearly pronounce that m sound, like when you're introducing yourself. I'm John. I'm John. I'm John. Goodbye. 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 So, goodbye is one way to say, like, something at the end of the day, usually, to say bye to someone. Goodbye sounds a little bit more formal than just bye, but you can use it to sound polite. Goodbye. See you again. Goodbye. See you again. Goodbye. See you again. Bad. 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 Okay, so bad is a word that means not good. You can use it to describe something you don't like or that you think is inappropriate. Be careful of bad people. Be careful of bad people. Be careful of bad people. Good. 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 So good is the opposite of bad. You can use it when you want to express that you like something or that you think something is positive. My teacher is a good person. My teacher is a good person. My teacher is a good person. Pretty. 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 So, pretty is used to describe someone or something's physical appearance, something that we think is beautiful. I have a pretty girlfriend. I have a pretty girlfriend. I have a pretty girlfriend. Ugly. 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 So, ugly is the opposite of pretty. We use this word to describe something that we think is not pleasing or is unpleasant. Ugly face. Ugly face. Ugly face. Easy. 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 So, easy is used to talk about something that is not difficult. It's maybe something that's simple to do. Easy exam. Easy exam. Easy exam. Difficult. 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 So, difficult describes something that is hard or something that is challenging to do. Difficult problem. Difficult problem. Difficult problem. Near. 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 Near is used to talk about something that is close to us. It's something that we can go to quickly and easily. I live near the university. I live near the university. I live near the university. Far. 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 So, far is the opposite of near. Far means something that is at great distance from something else. There's like a long way to get to something. The station is far from here. The station is far from here. The station is far from here. Small. 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 So, small is the opposite of big. We use it to describe things that are little. 
You can use it for concepts, for objects, or for people. Small mistake. Small today. 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 Today means this day. We use this when we want to talk about something that's happening on this day, like part of a schedule. Today's homework. Today's homework. Today's homework. Yesterday. 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 So yesterday means the day before today. So you can use this word when you're talking about like past actions. Yesterday morning. Yesterday morning. Yesterday morning. Tomorrow. 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 So tomorrow is like the opposite of yesterday. It means the day after today. So we use this when we're talking about our future plans. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Week. 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 So week refers to seven days, that seven day period. So we use week when we want to talk about making plans or our schedules and so on. I'm busy this week. I'm busy this week. I'm busy this week. Year. 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 So a year is 365 days. So we use year when we're talking about points in time, like historical events. One year. One year. One year. Second. 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 So second refers to a very short period of time. So the amount of time that's inside one minute, for example, there are 60 seconds in a minute. There are 60 seconds in a minute. There are 60 seconds in a minute. 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 Min-ut. So minute refers to, again, a period of time. We learned that there are 60 seconds in a minute, and we can use minutes when we're talking about times of day. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Hour. 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 So an hour refers to one of those 24 blocks of time throughout the day. I sleep for eight hours every day. I sleep for eight hours every day. I sleep for eight hours every day. Clock. 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 A clock is an object that we use to understand what time of day it is. We can have analog or digital. Alarm clock. Alarm clock. Alarm clock. A clock. A clock. A clock. So a clock is used after a number from 1 to 12 to show that it's a specific hour. Let's meet at the station at 9 o'clock. Let's meet at the station at 9 o'clock. Let's meet at the station at 9 o'clock. Calendar. 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 So a calendar is something we use to understand the dates of the year. There are 12 months on a typical calendar. I marked our anniversary on the calendar. I marked our anniversary on the calendar. I marked our anniversary on the calendar. Monday. 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 So Monday is, for most people, the first day of the work week. 
I go to work on Monday. I go to work on Monday. I go to work on Monday. Tuesday. 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 Tuesday is for most people the second day of the work week. Tuesday, January 1st. Tuesday, January 1st. Tuesday, January 1st. Wednesday. 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 So Wednesday is the middle day of the week, but keep in mind this is pronounced Wednesday. There's a D there, but we don't say Wednesday. We say Wednesday. Wednesday the 18th. Wednesday the 18th. Wednesday the 18th. Thursday. 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 So Thursday is the fourth day of the work week, the day that comes before Friday. So most people get a little bit excited for Friday, and thus Thursday is kind of the day when some people start their weekends a little bit early. Thursday, January 3rd. Thursday, January 3rd. Thursday, January 3rd. Friday. 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 So Friday is the last day of the work week, and lots of people get excited about Friday, and they do things on Friday nights with their friends or their coworkers. Are you free this Friday? Are you free this Friday? Are you free this Friday? Saturday. 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 So Saturday is the first day of the weekend. Lots of people choose to do things like their hobbies or maybe take a trip somewhere. It's a day to relax for lots of people. Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Sunday. 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 So Sunday is the last day of the weekend, usually. Sunday tends to be a more relaxing day, so we're kind of recharging a little bit and taking it easy. Sunday morning breakfast. Sunday morning breakfast. Sunday morning breakfast. Do. 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 So, do is used when we're referring to some kind of activity. We're making something happen. We are taking care of something. Do homework. Do homework. Do homework. Go. 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 So, the verb go means to move from one place to another place. We use this when we're traveling or maybe even when we're talking about some place we would like to go or like to travel to. Go to the park. Go to the park. Go to the park. Laugh. 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 So laugh can be used as either a noun or as a verb. So we use this when we find something funny. The couple is laughing at a joke. The couple is laughing at a joke. The couple is laughing at a joke. Delicious. 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 So delicious is a word we use when we think something tastes good. We can use this for food or drinks. Chinese food is delicious. Chinese food is delicious. Chinese food is delicious. Water. 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 So water is just the word we use for the thing we drink, the most basic thing to drink. Can I have some water, please? Can I have some water, please? Can I have some water, please? 
T. 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 So tea is another very popular drink. You can have it cold or hot. Would you like a cup of tea? Would you like a cup of tea? Would you like a cup of tea? Coffee. 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 Coffee is yet another very popular drink.、Uh, we usually have this in the morning. Cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. Beer. 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 So beer, yet another very popular drink for adults. We usually enjoy beer after work. Cold beer. Cold beer. Cold beer. Wine. Wine, wine. So wine is something that we tend to enjoy with kind of special occasions, or we like to pair it with foods. Glass of wine. Glass of wine. Glass of wine. Beef. 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 So beef refers to meat that comes from a cow. This can mean anything that comes from a cow. Beef steak. Beef steak. Beef steak. Chicken. 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 So chicken refers to the animal, but also the meat. When you want to talk about one like of the animal, you can say a chicken. Chicken can be fried, baked, or roasted. Chicken can be fried, baked, or roasted. Chicken can be fried, baked, or roasted. Pork. 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 So pork is another very popular meat. We often have it at breakfast as bacon, or maybe in the evening as like a pork chop. Pork is the meat from a pig. Pork is the meat from a pig. Pork is the meat from a pig. Fish. 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 So fish is anything that comes from the ocean, anything that comes from the ocean or from other bodies of water. Chicken or fish. Chicken or fish. Chicken or fish. Lamb. 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 So lamb refers to meat that comes from a baby sheep. Lamb is extremely delicious. Lamb is extremely delicious. Lamb is extremely delicious. Doctor. 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 So a doctor is a person who helps other people with their health. If you get sick, go to the doctor. If you get sick, go to the doctor. If you get sick. Go to the doctor. Police officer. Police officer. Police officer. So a police officer is someone in a city that helps other people when they are in trouble. I'll ask a police officer for help. I'll ask a police officer for help. I'll ask a police officer for help. Teacher. 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 So a teacher is someone who shares information, who helps students or other people to learn something. English teacher. English teacher. English teacher. Employee. 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 
An employee is someone who works at a company or someone who works for someone else. Female employee. Female employee. Female employee. Come. 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 So we use the verb come to mean to move from one location to the place where we are now. The girl came towards the video camera. The girl came towards the video camera. The girl came towards the video camera. See. 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 So we use the verb see to mean to use our eyes to focus on something. The tourist saw the sunset. The tourists saw the sunset. The tourists saw the sunset. Make. 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 We use the verb make when we talk about creating something. The chef makes orange juice. The chef makes orange juice. The chef makes orange juice. Use, use, use. So we use the verb use when we want to talk about like applying something or we want to talk about uh, utilizing something for something else. The programmer used the computer. The programmer used the computer. The programmer used the computer. Can. 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 So, can is used to mean something we are able to do. Can jump over. Can jump over. Can jump over. Zero. 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 So, zero is used to refer to the number, which means nothing. So, we also read this as O sometimes. Number zero. Number zero. Number zero. One. 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 So, one means the first number. So, we use it anytime there's a single number of something. One degree. One degree. One degree. Two. 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 So two is the second number. We use it to talk about pairs or couples of things. The number two is my favorite number. The number two is my favorite number. The number two is my favorite number. Three. 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 So the third number in English is the number three. Three dollars. Three dollars. Three dollars. Four. 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 So the fourth number in English is the number four. Keep in mind that the spelling is different from F O R, which means a purpose. Number four. Number four. Number four. Five. 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 So the next number is the number five. The starfish has five legs. The starfish has five legs. The starfish has five legs. Six. 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 So the next number in our sequence is the number six. We have a six day vacation next month. We have a six day vacation next month. 
We have a six-day vacation next month. Seven. 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 So the next number in this sequence is the number seven. There are seven days in every week. There are seven days in every week. There are seven days in every week. Eight. 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 So the next number is the number H. This has an interesting spelling. It's pronounced eight. Eight is a lucky number. Eight is a lucky number. Eight is a lucky number. Nine. 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 So the next number in this series is the number nine. Nine floors. Nine floors. Nine floors. Ten. 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 So ten is the first double digit number. That means there are two digits, one and zero. Ten grams. Ten grams. Ten grams. Salesman. 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 So a salesman is a male, a man who sells things. Car salesman. Car salesman. Car salesman. Manager. Manager. Man a jur. So a manager is a person at a workplace that is responsible for other people. Department manager. Department manager. Department manager. Cook. 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 So a cook is a person who makes food. A cook is different from a chef in that a chef went to school. A cook has their experience on the job. The cook fried an egg. The cook fried an egg. The cook fried an egg. Engineer. 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 So an engineer is a technology-related job. An engineer can create things in many different industries. I'm an engineer. I'm an engineer. I am an engineer. Programmer. 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 So a programmer is a person who writes or who creates programs. I am a computer programmer. I'm a computer programmer. I am a computer programmer. Nurse. 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 So a nurse is someone who works at a hospital or a clinic or at like a nursing home. So they help patients. The woman is a nurse. The woman is a nurse. The woman is a nurse. Body. 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 So a body can be a human body. It's just your actual body, all of your different parts. We can also use this for animals too. Food is fuel for the body. Food is fuel for the body. Food is fuel for the body. Head. 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 So head refers to this part of your body, the very top part of your body. Head injuries are very dangerous. Head injuries are very dangerous. Head injuries are very dangerous. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. 
where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the power of mistakes. Have you ever made a mistake in your target language while talking with a native speaker? Maybe you said the wrong word. Maybe you misconjugated a verb. When you make a mistake, you usually don't forget about it, right? Well, that's the power of mistakes. And in today's episode, you're going to find out why making mistakes is crucial to learning a language. Do you know the most common adverbs of frequency? You will with this one minute lesson. Learn how to say rarely, always, often, sometimes, and much more in your target language. Fourth, must know summer clothes vocab. Do you know how to say t-shirt or shorts in your target language? If you don't, you can learn how. This one minute lesson will give you all the words you need for summer clothing. Fifth, the top 50 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you 50 must know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Okay, today's topic is how remembering your mistakes can help you learn faster. First, take a moment and think of a time when you made a mistake. Maybe you were at work, maybe you were at school, maybe you were shopping or in another public place. We can all probably clearly remember many mistakes we've made. We also remember the reactions of the people around us. Some people are understanding, some people aren't so understanding. But why do we remember these situations so clearly? Psychologically speaking, negative things tend to impact us more than positive things. For example, if we're asked to choose between gaining friends or gaining money and losing friends or losing money, we'll choose not to lose friends or lose money, not to gain. This is called loss aversion. We tend to avoid losing more than we work on gaining. We spend time thinking about our negative past experiences to avoid them in the future. Because of this, negative events, like making mistakes, stay in our minds for a very long time. And this happens in language learning. If you make a language mistake while chatting with a native speaker, it'll probably be hard to forget. Yes, it's true that when we're learning another language, we don't always know when we've made a mistake. But when we realize we've used the wrong word, used grammar incorrectly, spelled something wrong or similar, we tend to remember the situation vividly. In some languages, just a tiny change in pronunciation, tone, or writing could make a big difference, so mistakes are a big source of worry for many learners. But the fact that mistakes are very hard for us to forget can be a powerful tool when learning a language. We want to avoid the feeling of embarrassment that comes after a mistake, so we work hard to correct ourselves. Past mistakes can motivate us to try harder. We can use our mistakes as a tool in our language learning but we can't make these emotionally powerful mistakes by reading a textbook or even by taking a lesson with a teacher. The only way you can make these mistakes is by speaking in real conversations and messing up. So what can you take away from this? Let's jump into the second part, how to use mistakes in your language learning. We can give advice like go ahead and make mistakes, but that's easier said than done. Here are three tips to help you make the most of your mistakes. One. Speak in your target language as much as possible. Why? Because part of the learning process is making mistakes. Accept that mistakes are going to happen. If you're not making any mistakes ever, then you're probably not challenging yourself. Two, look for opportunities to speak. Many learners have trouble finding public places to practice the language they're studying. See if there are language groups in your community or at your school. If you have trouble with that, look online and be creative. You don't need to search for groups specifically for language learners. See if you can find a hobby discussion in your target language. Maybe you'll find a news discussion group. Think outside the box. Find somewhere to practice and make mistakes. When you do mess up, you'll probably remember it. Three, build on your experiences. Think carefully about your conversations after you have them and work to make them longer each time. If you made a mistake in your first conversation, think about how to fix it. If you said only a few sentences in your first discussion, work to speak for 15 or 30 seconds on the next discussion. Challenge yourself. Many learners have trouble finding opportunities to speak that work with their schedule and their level. If you're not sure where else you can practice, you can consider hiring a tutor. If you're a Premium Plus member on our website, you can practice with your teacher. 
it's still important where possible to practice and make mistakes in real life situations. This will help you to more carefully reflect on your conversations and work to improve. It isn't quite the same as studying with a textbook or a hired tutor. This strong desire to avoid making a mistake will help you work to improve. You'll be motivated to try harder. This can help you learn faster. So, thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. So, you decided to learn a new language. At first, the idea seemed exciting. You bought a phrase book, dictionary, and a subscription to an online class, ready to dive headfirst into the language. For the first day or two, all was well. You gained ground quickly, learning a few basic phrases and words. A week before, learning that language was just a dream, but now you're actually doing it. Then, the third and fourth day roll around. The excitement is wearing off. You encouraged yourself to continue, and another week or two goes by, but with a lot less progress. Suddenly, learning a new language doesn't fill you with excitement anymore. Now it feels more like dread. Sometimes it feels like you're drowning in grammatical cases, verb conjugations, and wonky pronunciation. It all seems too much to handle, so you start to think about giving up. But we encourage you not to give up. Learning a foreign language is difficult. We won't pretend like it isn't. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Sometimes you just need to take a step back, reevaluate your approach, and come back to the language with a different perspective. In this video, we'll look at four tips for when learning a new language feels overwhelming. Number one, set aside a designated study time. Consistency is key when learning a foreign language. Studying 15 minutes seven days a week will benefit you more than cramming in two hours one day a week. Set aside an amount of time that works best for you. If you can afford to spend an hour every day learning, that's awesome, go for it. But don't feel bad if you can't spend that much time. Even 10 or 15 minutes a day goes a long way. Breaking up your learning into manageable time segments will relieve a lot of the stress that can come with studying a new language. Learning is not a race. Go at your own pace and try not to compare your progress with anyone else's. Number two, take it one bite at a time. Now that you have your schedule under control, it's time to focus on what you'll actually be studying. It's recommended that every one to two weeks, you focus on learning a very specific piece of the language. It could be a conjugation group, a case, tense, or a collection of theme vocabulary. Whatever you choose, hone in on it and do your best to feel comfortable with it before you move on to something else. Ever heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? Focusing on one thing at a time helps you break the language into digestible chunks. Number three, expose yourself to the language in different ways. Don't just sit around reading about grammar all day. Obviously, knowledge of grammar is important, but you want to spice up your practice as much as possible. In addition to grammatical study, try to mix in a combination of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Try to practice reading by either translating a simple article into your native language, or maybe if you're a beginner, pick up a children's book in your target language. For writing, you can try to write out a fictional conversation between you and yourself, even. Use the phrases you know to create a mock conversation, and don't use any words you can't think of or you don't remember. To practice speaking, you can find native speakers locally at a language club or at a meetup. You can also find them online in a language exchange. For listening, a great podcast should do the trick. Spread out each type of practice, listening, reading, speaking, and writing across your regular language study schedule. This will give you a balanced experience in the language and should help keep things interesting. This method also works well when you use it to focus on a single aspect of the language like we talked about above. Number four, set mini goals, not just big ones. If your only language learning goal is to be fluent, you're likely setting yourself up for disappointment. While speaking fluently can be your ultimate goal, it shouldn't be your only one. Try to set mini goals month by month and week by week. It could be something simple, learn 20 new verbs, practice a new case, or speak with three native speakers. As long as it's specific and reasonable to achieve in a shorter amount of time, it should work fine. Not having mini goals alongside your ultimate goal is a lot like sprinting across a huge open field. There's no reference point, so for much of the time, it feels like you're not any closer to your goal. It's not that you're not moving forward, it just feels like you're not. Without any trees or buildings to run past, it seems like you're running in place. Mini goals are like the trees and buildings of your language race. 
they help you see that you're moving forward and give you a sense of accomplishment. The desire for perfection can get in the way of your progress. Don't freak out when you struggle to speak or make a mistake. It's all a part of the learning process. Also, don't be afraid to speak, even if you know what you'll say won't be totally correct. It's better to do your best to communicate in the language and get it wrong than to never try at all. Learning a new language isn't always easy. In fact, oftentimes it's very hard. Don't let that discourage you though. Use these tips to help keep you focused yet unstressed in your language learning. A little perseverance will go a long way. Before long, you'll be speaking better than you may have thought was possible. Reading in a foreign language is great, but a big challenge related to reading is that you often need a high level of fluency before it gets really fun. And if a book isn't fun, then you're not going to want to read it. The entire point of sitting down with a book is to enjoy it and have a good time being absorbed in the story or learning the information. And that's just not going to happen if you need to look up every second word. It'll take you out of the story, and it will feel like a chore, like an assignment from school where you have to read the book for a class. But there is a resource that you might not know about that can really help your skills, bilingual books. In this video, we'll look at how to supercharge your vocabulary with bilingual reading. This is a simple solution that will make reading, especially at the beginner levels, easier and fun. These are books that have your target language on the left page and your native language on the right. But how do you use it? Well, it's all in the name. You read a book in two languages at once, the language that you're learning plus the language that you're fluent in. There are a few different formats for bilingual books, but the most common one is the one previously mentioned. You have a book that has your foreign language on one side and your native language on the other. It's also possible to find stories that are presented bilingually, paragraph by paragraph. The principle is the same, but the information is just in more bite-sized chunks, so your eyes need to travel less to read both texts. The great thing about bilingual reading is that you can quickly switch between languages, and the translation is presented to you, so you don't need to try to distinguish between the 10 variants of a word that your dictionary offers, which brings us to the main advantage. Bilingual reading is great for building your initial vocabulary. When you first try reading in a new language, you'll probably find that you need a relatively high level of fluency before you can make a strong connection with the words on the page. Reading is a lot of fun if you already know about 80% of the words, as you can guess the meaning of another 15% from context and then look up the remaining few words you do not understand. But if you're starting out, you might know only 10% of the words. That's where bilingual reading can help a lot. Here's a way to use a bilingual book. Read a sentence first in your target language. See if you understand it. If you do, think about the meaning of some of the key words. Then, quickly glance on the other side of the page and check the translation. This way, you'll be able to have fun reading and learn contextual vocabulary at the same time. Let's look at why it works well if you're learning a language at home. If you're taking language classes, then your teacher sometimes supports you in a similar way to the translated page. When you're reading a text with your teacher, you can ask them questions whenever you do not understand something. They'll give you a translation quickly and can share other ways in which a word can be used. But if you're learning from home, you don't have that advantage. Bilingual reading offers the same benefits as you can quickly check the translation of a sentence and see what each word means. The main goal of bilingual books is to bridge the gap between the beginner and intermediate to more advanced levels. They can help set you up to read real books without any translations. Some language purists might recommend you read only stories that were originally written in your target language, but any book you enjoy is best to encourage your studies. Use bilingual reading to improve your vocabulary and reading comprehension skills until you get so good that you don't need it anymore. It doesn't matter what language you're learning. Bilingual reading works for every language. The principles of language learning don't change, only the implementation does. You also don't really need too much knowledge at the start. If you like a real challenge, then you could even start reading some simple bilingual stories without any prior experience in a language. However, just as with other language programs and courses, the more people who speak a specific language, the easier it'll be to find bilingual books. Why is speaking the number one weakness for most language learners? Some time ago, we sent out a survey to find out a little more about you. We asked about what you like, what you don't like, your strengths and your weaknesses. One question asked you to rate your abilities in listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Over 70% of people surveyed answered that their biggest weakness is speaking. In this video, you'll find out why speaking is a common weakness. You'll also learn six ways you can start improving your speaking skills right now.
This is a common issue for language learners. But why is speaking the number one weakness for most learners? It's pretty simple when you consider that you get better at what you focus on. You get better at what you focus on. When people start learning a language, they usually start with reading. Most learners start with textbooks. Learners taking their first class probably spend most of their time doing homework and reviewing information in their textbook, spending maybe only 30 minutes a week or so repeating words in class. If you spend most of your time reading, you'll get better at reading, but your speaking skills won't grow. It's like exercising just one muscle. That single muscle will get stronger, but the other ones, which are ignored, stay small. This is why speaking is such a common weakness for learners. If you want to improve your speaking skills, you need to spend more time speaking. Here are six ways you can start right now. Number one, get a native speaker tutor to practice with. A common issue is most people don't have access to teachers or native speakers, or they just don't have the time to meet with one. But with our Premium Plus plan, you get your very own on-site teacher. You can practice speaking by recording yourself and having them review it. One popular tactic is to talk about your day. To do this, send three recordings, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one at night. Your teacher will review your recordings and then give you corrections and feedback. Number two, get conversation-based lessons in the lesson library. If you visit your lesson library, you can sort lessons by conversation, reading, writing, vocab, grammar, or culture. So select conversations and you'll see the lessons that expose you to conversations and get you speaking the language. Number three, read out loud. While you're listening to a lesson and reading along with the notes, try reading out loud. Then reread and speed up your tempo. If you're reading out loud, you're practicing your speaking skills. And by increasing your speed, you'll also be able to talk faster and with confidence. Do this again and again until you can speak faster. Number four, prepare things to say ahead of time. Most learners, especially beginners, run out of things to say. But if you prepare lines ahead of time, you won't have to worry about this. Start speaking with prepared lines from our three-minute video lessons, top 25 questions lessons, survival phrases lessons, and other lessons that you'll find in the lesson library. Number five, shadow conversations. This means you should repeat the dialogues as you hear them. In every lesson, you learn a new conversation. So try to shadow the conversation line by line. Premium and Premium Plus users use the dialogue tool with this method and you'll master conversations faster. Number six, review again and again. Regular review is essential to mastery. Many learners don't review. If you review and repeat lines again and again, you'll speak better, faster, and with more confidence. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.